Hello everybody, my name is Ian Kirk Patty Cake. I'm an author and robot, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Lead More Body More with the author tube in the author new release tag because guess what? Body More comes out on Sunday. We are finally here, and clearly I haven't talked about this book enough on this channel, so I'm gonna do a little QA. Maybe all of these questions have already been answered. I can't keep track anymore. So if you're interested in Lead More Body More, get ready for the lowdown on the essentials. And if you would like to do the author tube um, new release tag, I will put all the questions down below. This is an, a tag I came up with. I was trying to figure, like, find things for talking about works coming up. So uh, feel free to use it and talk about your own books. So uh, get to know what you're working on, what you're releasing. But before we get started, number one, if you enjoy what I do on this channel, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more. Also, let me know what kind of topics that you're interested in having featured on this channel so I can answer your questions and help you out the most. And, or, you know, entertain. And uh, number two, if you would like to be featured on this channel, check out the links down below, Lemoy, to do the prompt for November. That is coming up here soon. And then uh, Pitch Fit. The final pitch fit for the year will be at the end of December, fourth quarter for 2021. So if you would like your creative project featured on this channel, check that out. Pitch it. I'll pitch it for you. Reuniting. Uniting. Uniting people with new creative content. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Question one. What is your book title? If you look to my, my left here, you'll see Bleed More, Body More. I haven't said it enough already. That's pretty, pretty simple. I really like the title. Um, it's one of those titles that didn't take super long to come to me. It was like, I came up with the location and then it was like, oh, that's it. That's it. And Body More is just a nickname for Baltimore. Um, yeah. What is your hook or tagline? So the hook slash tagline comes straight from the book. It is... Horror is what happens when evil overtakes the heart, and that is placed in there as graffiti. And uh, Joey actually says that line to the Grim Reaper as well at some point. So that's one of the, the things that eventually became an underlying theme or um, summary of themes of what is actually happening in Baltimore, at least in this book. Um, in part. So... And that leads me into question three, which is, what is the story about? So the story is about Joey, who is a mechanic in Baltimore. Uh, don't be confused. He, <laughs> Joey is a she. Um, it's kind of funny because in most, in, in a good number of reviews, they say jo Josephine, or Joey, as she goes by. And every time my internal Joey is like, are you calling me Josephine? Nobody calls me that. <laughs> and... Sometimes it feels like reviewers are going out of their way to say Josephine. Uh, <laughs> she's like... But uh, she is a mechanic in Baltimore, and she goes to pick up her friend's car from the infamous body dumping ground known as Lincoln Park. And when she goes to pick... It's, it's late at night. And when she gets to the car, her friend isn't there. She gets the car back to the body shop that she works at, and there is a smell when she opens the trunk... There's a body inside, and uh, yeah, her friend is missing. So this turns into a big hunt where she's trying to find her friend before the cops do, because the cops obviously believe her friend murdered somebody, and she, who knows her friend, believes that he didn't. Uh, while searching for her friend, she discovers a city of ghosts, basically limbo, underneath Baltimore. This informs her of uh, what is actually causing all of the violence and anger and death in Baltimore. So it is a story of ghosts, of spirits, the afterlife, regrets, anger. Question number four is, what are the central characters like? So you're either going to like them or you hate them. Um, Jared and Val seem to be the, uh, the in general crowd favorites. But who is not going to like a reaper and like basically a shifter raven that eats hearts? They've got just a very cool aesthetic together. But the central character, Joey, you're either going to love her or you hate her. Uh, she's kind of defensive, standoffish. She has a hard background and is hardened because of her family life. And so she also deals with um, life with caustic sarcasm and shrugging things off. She has trust issues because of a lot of the failures in her life. And 
that's also what pushes the story forward is she doesn't believe that she can trust the cops she doesn't believe that she can rely on anybody to go looking for her missing friend and she's the one that has to go and do it or else he's just going to become another missing person in baltimore that is eventually forgotten so um then you've got jag who is just he's her co-worker and her no strings attached boyfriend by the end of the book he does he is like dtr dtr joey um, but because Joey has commitment issues and trust issues, they just never defined it. And he's just a good guy. He's just there for her. He's got... He actually does care about her. He's got very good personality. I really like him. And then you've got Wayland, who is Joey's BFF, the missing guy. Uh, childhood friend. They hit it off in grade school because they were both kind of weirdos for different reasons. And he's very smart, but he has his own issue, which he can't control impulses or certain, and it's very difficult. Though in the Bleed More Body More 2, which is going to be called Bleed More Body More, Wayland and Jag are much more central. Moving on, question five is how would you describe the genre? So first I called it um, Supernatural Suspense. It has a lot of horror vibes in it. It has been compared to Edgar Allan Poe a couple of times in reviews, and I would also call it urban fantasy, you know, with the spooky vibes. So probably first, I'm probably leaning toward urban fantasy um, with the spooky vibes, but a number of people have called it horror. And then one of the things with horror is that it is so varied that everybody has different lines for where they would draw horror or where they would say it's not horror. The same thing happened with the Dead End Drive where some people are like, Dead End Drive is horror but then it's not. So it depends on where your line is for horror, but it's uncomfortable. It's atmospheric. There's that. And urban, I would say atmospheric urban fantasy is where I'm landing right now. Do you have any comp titles? What I've been comparing it to is um, Odd Thomas, one of them by Dean Koontz. Um, the Brothers Grimm, because of the horror is what happens when evil overtakes the heart and the, the whole meaning behind that and what you see going on in Baltimore. And then, like I said, it's been comped with Edgar Allan Poe a couple of times, but that could just be the raven on the cover. I don't really know. Oh my gosh, how did I not get the bird out for this freaking video? I don't know. But he's up there on the shelf. Sorry. Sorry I forgot to get Val out for this. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember Val the next time I do a video on this book. Um, question seven, is it a standalone or part of a series? So initially, I when I started writing this, there was not a plan. But as I got to the end of it, as I got to the end of revision, really, I determined that, and not that I, but as I got to the end of the revising stage and it started to go into beta reading, or not beta reading, as it started to go into a review phase, starting with Book Sirens, I started to realize that it was not a completed story slash I had ideas for furthering, uh, I had ideas for further story arcs that needed to be completed. So Joey doesn't have a full character arc in this book. You do see her go through a minor change, but in order to see her go from the, the damage that she has now to actually um, processing the grieving and then learning how to trust, it's going to take the whole series is that there is a character arc. It just doesn't happen all in book one. And it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. Okay, people, it's a step-by-step process. Um, so there's going to be three books in this series. The first is obviously Bleed More, Body More. The second will be Plead More, Body More. And the third will be Grieve More, Body More. And uh, then we're done. And the covers are going to be so beautiful. Just like this one. Assuming that I get them all. By that I mean assuming I write all of the books. Because... Let me tell you, I'm having issues right now. I don't know if it shows on my face, but I'm having some... Now I just... Um, question eight is, how did you come up with this idea? So it started out with, I saw the phrase Cadus Silvis online, and you may recognize that from being related to the McAfee, McAfee manner. The, like, extreme haunt that actually kidnaps and tortures you. Anyway, they have basically what's akin to a test run before you can go into the McAfee manner, uh, called Cadus Silvis which means murder woods in Latin. And immediately I clicked with that phrase. So a lot of what happens with my creative process is I'll catch a vibe of something 
or I will see a phrase that I really, really like, and I will just know that that's going to be something. Like one time it was, I was watching some, I was starting a brand new television show, and obviously the first episode was called Pilot, and I just saw the word Pilot, and I was like, I want to make a character who's psychic and name them Pilot. And that's all that I had for a while until, oh, now I have a character named Pilot. Actually, I really do. So that's how that happens. Just that's how that's how um, Not Dead came to be, is I listened to a song called Still Not Dead, and the title and the vibe and the hearse all gave me just a vibe. So I put that on my wall, and then eventually I found the location, and... I was vibing and the story kind of exists. I don't think I have the central plot for that yet, but I have the main characters, I have the central characters, and I have the location, and I have two books that are going to help me build kind of the plot. So anyway, that's how that works. So with this story, going back to Bodymore, it started out with the phrase Cadus Silvis, and I thought that it was going to be something in a murder woods, possibly like the suicide woods in Japan, and it was going to feature a ghost of somebody who committed suicide and somebody that could see ghosts, and that's where I thought it was going to go until a couple months later, and I just put the word Cadus Silvis and ghost person. I thought Cadus Silvis was going to be the name of somebody that killed themselves in the woods. Yeah, that didn't happen. Um, so I just put it on my marker board over there to let the idea percolate, and then it was a couple months later. Uh, what was I working on at the time? I'd have to go back and check. I feel like I was working on, I think it was Cain and Abel that I was working on last summer because I started working on Bodymore at the end of last summer. It like started in August or September. Um, but I was mowing the lawn when all of a sudden Joey came out of nowhere and was like, Hey to Silvis, it's about me. It's about Baltimore. It's about Leakin Park because I watch a bunch of Dan Bell videos. I love his abandoned theories and how he goes to different places and so he uh i think is from baltimore and he's been to a couple places in baltimore and uh like leakin park and like the old town mall and the old kaufman's at old town mall and a number of things like that so i got the vibe for baltimore through specifically dan bell videos <laughs> don't come at me please uh and uh, then that's also that's where I got Bodymore from, the idea of Bodymore Murderland. And so then Joey came forward and was like, This story is about me and Leakin Park. Adis Silvis is referring to Leakin Park. And then I was mowing the lawn and I got, Oh, she is obviously Joey's a mechanic. And so she came forward, said, This is my story. And it starts out in a park. Uh, it went from there because I really didn't know what I was doing when I started. And the story sort of delivered itself between the major points like I knew when I started that the first major tracking point for the book or the turning point for the book would be when Joey found the ghost town and then the second one would be kind of a spoiler so I can't mention it but I knew what the second one was going to be I didn't know what the third one was going to be until I got to the end of act two and started act three and then it just kind of roller coastered so I knew all of that stuff so that's where the idea came from it came from Cadus Silvis which eventually went into the character came to me and then the story came to me that's all i could say is there a central theme that you either wrote about or discovered as you wrote so i didn't go i usually don't go into books with ideas for theme that i want to push into a story i learn about the theme of the story when i'm writing the book i'd say the exception to that is cain and abel just because writing about jeffrey dahmer um, comes with its own theme of loneliness and isolation and psychosis from those things and uh, fear of abandonment. So I already knew that those were going to be involved in the Jeffrey Dahmer inspired story. But with this, I didn't know what the central themes were going to be. And ultimately, the theme, one of the themes that came out is intergenerational trauma and how intergenerational trauma affects um, individuals, families, cities, as a whole, continues to traumatize and continues to hurt people even after they're gone. So that became a really big thing. Also, uh, good and evil is very much one of the aesthetics and one of the subjects that I like to explore in my writing, and that also comes out in this. You see that with horror is what happens when evil overtakes the heart, and there's a lore behind that in the book, so hopefully that comes through. Pretty much those. Pretty much just the effect that we have on each other as a whole long past when we are gone and the way that 
Evil just destroys, man. It corrupts. And you don't even see it coming necessarily. Uh, question 10 is, what was the process like for writing this book? How long did it take? So this was, I think, one of the fastest books I've ever written. This in Boom, 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 which is my next book coming out in May, were both fairly quick processes. I think first draft of this took about three months, and then I spent the next three to four months doing various revisions and edits and line edits. And it only is actually considered done now <laughs> that it is going to print and it has an audiobook. So I would say seven to eight months on uh, Body More. And... <laughs> That's, that's not counting the couple of months that Kata Silvis sat on my wall. And then I think the idea actually came to me in August, and I didn't start working on it until probably mid-September. I'd have to go and check my timeline. And question 11 is, what surprised you and changed or changed the most during revision? So one of the things that changed the most during revision is the relationship between Jag and Joey, because originally they were just co-workers and it was going to have kind of a hint that they could have been something in the future. But as I did revisions, their relationship just kept coming out more and more. And Jag was very clearly involved with Joey's life as more than just a co-worker who hadn't slept with her. And then it became obvious that he had an investment in her, even if she didn't know it. Like, he is there for her. He is there to catch her when she falls, even if she is, like, none of this. But she'll definitely flirt with him. But she just is not seeing it as serious as it is yet. And that's eventually one of her character arcs uh, later, is seeing just how serious Jag is and how she has been kind of a jackass for not acknowledging just how serious Jag has been about her. And just, she is serious about him. She just won't say it because she expects him to leave. There is a, a lot in here about low self-esteem that comes with trauma, that comes with abandonment, that comes with the violence and child abuse that she went through, and how it affects you and all of the relationship that, relationships that you have and the relationships that you feel like you deserve. And so Joey doesn't commit to anybody because she doesn't expect anybody to be there. Another thing that I, another theme that I in general like to experience um, or explore in my works is that feeling of abandonment or self-esteem or and or <laughs> isolation. And maybe that's because I struggle with them. So I'm very interested in ob observing and and putting it into work in ways that I can. But that comes up a lot, too. Drowning on the River Sticks was also something that surprised me, but that came out in the first draft, like, when I got to that part. And I was like, this is pretty thick. What is this going to be? And then I discovered as I got to Act 3 what exactly that means, and that was really cool. It was probably one of my favorite discoveries so far with a book. Question 12 is, do you have any playlists or songs that fit with your book? What are some and how do they relate? So first off, I have a playlist on YouTube that specifically relates to the Body More series, which I will link at the end of this video if you want to catch some vibes for Body More. Uh, a couple of the biggest songs for this book specifically include As It Is, um, I Don't Give a Fuck, and that is like the theme for the book because it's Joey's mindset throughout the entire book. Um... Another one would be Nirvana's Smells Like Team Spirit because I listened to that song on repeat for pretty much the last one third of the book while writing it because when I write, I have to find a song that catches the vibe that I'm just feeling and then that's the only song that I'm allowed to listen to until I find a new song that catches the vibe for whatever I'm working on. And so sometimes I will go weeks and months only listening to one song indefinitely while I'm writing. Uh, I'll listen to other songs in the car. But while I'm writing, I can only listen to that one song, and as you can imagine, it can get annoying. Even when I'm tired of listening to that song, I can't just change it, or else the the writing it stop writing doesn't happen anymore. Another one was um, I think it's Jaguar Twins, Happy, and that was a song that I listened to a lot in the first half when weird stuff is happening with the ghost town when Joey was in the forest for the first time. I think when she was at Fort Armistead and pretty. Pretty very often while she was in uh, Cave Mortem. Even in Act 2 when she was in Cave Mortem. So that was a big one for that. I'm trying to think if there are any other ones that really stand out as 
or Body More. But I think those are the three main songs that I really associate with this. And then spoiler alert, um, I Lie to Me by As It Is would be <laughs> a theme song for book two. And uh, Pretty Jaguar, I can't remember who the band was, but you'll see it on the list. That is a theme for Jag and Joey, probably closer to book three. Uh, so that's fun. It's just a cute little song. So 13 is tell me about your cover art, what inspired it. Did you make it or did you hire someone to make it? So this beautiful, beautiful cover art here. And it is still so gorgeous in person because it is glossy and shiny and beautiful. I have it on my wall over there even. Can't see it, but it's over there. I think I showed it before. This is by the comic artist Sam Johnson. And I will link his website down below. He also is on Twitter and Instagram. Um, he is so good. He is also my creative best friend. We've been friend friends for more than 10 years. And we do pretty much everything creative together. Uh, but let me show you how this background started. Because this was his version of my concept. So uh, this is my concept art that I created when I first started thinking of the Bodymore cover. I knew I wanted the raven to represent Val, the Vole Raven. And uh, clearly, look at <laughs> my beautiful writing there. And I knew that I kind of wanted a little teardroppy eye. And so this is all that I could do. Now, after that, after I created this, I created a mock cover, maybe, if it works. Yeah. Ignore the the the, uh, the backer text on this. That's for a different one of my books that someday will exist right now. Well, technically drafted. I need to uh, revise it a couple of times. But this was the next concept art that I came up with using... Um, stock images. Clearly, we still got the raven, and I put something in its eye. It does have technically a little bit stuff, a stuff erased out of its eye, but then I put kind of a reaper slash shadow in its eye. Um, and then this backer, everything about what's behind it is from copying and pasting its feathers and uh, using that as a texture. So that, that was my next concept. And then that is what I gave Sam as well, and Sam came up with this gorgeous thing um a couple of times he tried a different backgrounds which included like buildings and different colors and there was a whole development phase to this where before it ended up in the purple sky that is from Cave Mortem but I am so happy with this cover it is so gorgeous and he is currently working on the lingerie for the hardcover which by the way uh I am calling the hardcover underneath the jacket lingerie from now on because it's the book's hidden goods, okay? Book lingerie is what it is. So that's going to be fun. And when the hardcover is on its way, I'm going to post an image, a little, te little teasy cover on Instagram. If you want to head over there, follow me, watch for that coming. And for anything else that I will be revealing in short time, or just fun stuff over there on Instagram, that's where it's... Oh, and one more thing about the cover here. So the... The ravens on the sticks are, is part of the back of the cover. And as you can see, there are seven ravens total. That is also uh, described in the book, which is things that I also really like about this cover. It's got the little, just the little shadow ravens with the red eyes. Ugh, there's so much about this cover that I just, it looks so good in person. I'm very excited to have the hardcover. It's going to be so pretty. And I'm so blessed to have a friend like Sam. You don't even know how great, but like my gratitude for Sam goes far beyond the creation of this. I don't want to get too, too depressing. Anyway, uh, number 14 is there any meaning behind your release date? So look, I came up with this question for this, this thing because my Jeffrey Dahmer book has a release date with a special meaning. And... I'm sure other people pick release dates that have special meanings or work with release dates that have special meanings, and I would love to hear what those are. So I really wanted to put it here. When I talk about Cain and Abel, I can be like, and this was the meaning behind this date. And it's probably going to be stupid by the time it comes up, but you know what? There it is. So the, there's no meaning behind the body more release date, just that it is Halloween and this is a spooky book. And so I was like, why not? Something tells me, though, that waiting until... Halloween to release a spooky book may not be the best decision, but it's all well, that's where we're at now. So speaking of which, 
what is the release date like i said this comes out on sunday october 31st 2021 so get ready to have your ravens and your spooky atmosphere and your murder park and your ghosts on the spookiest night of the year coming in audiobook paperback and ebook as soon as the hardcover is ready, that will be out too. So thank you so much for watching. I hope if you check out the book, you enjoy it. And I look forward to uh, being trashed. <laughs> With all that said, thank you so much for watching. Have a great Monday and don't die. Was that Wayland Cross in the trunk? Do you know or is that something that's still being figured out? The person in the trunk was not Wayland Cross. Is he in trouble? We don't know who did it. But as the owner of the car, the longer he's missing, the worse it looks for him. Cross isn't a killer. For the last couple of years, the average number of murders in Baltimore has been over 300, and it's been going up. Mind you, that's only whatever the badges count as official murder, and believe me, there are people that don't count when they die. Wayland? If you're down here, tell me. I'm not talking to the badges, I just... I've been looking for you. They found a body in your trunk, Way. Why? Did you do that? To the left, plain black letters read along the wall. You walked in the corridor. Once that ends, you chose the dark is on the right. My vision goes blurry flickers black and black and black for longer intervals until I can't see anything at all. I'm not screaming anymore, but my voice echoes back to me. Where the hell am I? You're dead, Josephine. Even smart people do stupid shit sometimes, right?